Ali, welcome to Wall Talks. Thank you very much for having me. Why are tax incentives so prevalent in the mining sector? Countries are competing for investment. They're competing for foreign direct investment. And so many governments um, feel it's appropriate to give incentives, tax incentives, to try and encourage those investors to, to invest and to exploit the resources in their country rather than a neighbouring country. Mm. So, so tax incentives are, are prevalent for that reason. And the research that we've done at IGF, we've looked at tax incentives across about 22 countries. Um, and what we find is, you know, they are prevalent for sure, uh, and particularly around uh, corporate income tax. Mm -hmm. So it is relatively common to see either a tax holiday, so there might be a period of time where the mine pays no tax at all, or where there is a, a lower rate of tax. Also um, around royalties as well, which is another important way that government collects revenue from the sector. It's, it's also not uncommon to see a uh, you know, reduced royalty rate or, or deferred royalty for a period of time. Now, there might be perfectly good reasons why governments are offering, mm. offering these incentives. Um, the question is just whether they have all the information they need at the time in order to make well-grounded and informed decisions. Is there an asymmetry between governments and mining companies? Yes, there is. Um, in information, I'm thinking. In yeah. information yeah. and often in expertise yeah. as well. Um, so in terms of information, you know, many governments, um, particularly in, in developing countries, don't have the resources to, um, to survey, you know, what's under the ground, basically. Mm. And so often when governments are going into negotiations uh, with investors, um, they have much less information about the resource and the value of the resource. Um, they also are likely to have less information about what the market is doing or is likely to do. And so all of those factors mean that governments um, generally have less information when it comes to negotiating the fiscal terms. It's difficult to say. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of empirical evidence on whether or not incentives are effective at attracting mining investment specifically. Mm. However, there are a number of studies that look at the role of incentives generally in attracting investment to developing countries. And those studies, the results are very mixed. It's very unclear, uncertain as to whether incentives actually work. What is clear is that incentives don't provide a compensation effect. So if your country lacks road networks, port infrastructure, good governance, these sorts of other non-tax factors, lowering tax rates is not necessarily going to compensate Mm. for those deficiencies. There is reason to suspect that incentives are going to be less effective in mining than in other sectors because it's location specific. The resource cannot be moved. Mm. So tax, so investors are going to be much less um, influenced as to whether there are incentives or not in one particular country. Certainly that seems to be what companies would also say as well. So they say to us, you know, ultimately the most important drivers of investment are the quality of the resource, uh, the other, the infrastructure that's available, so mm. roads, ports, electricity, and the governance environment. Now that's not to say companies won't ask for incentives and that governments won't grant them, uh, but it does suggest that incentives are potentially less important at bringing in investment into that sector. These tax incentives, are they typically negotiated between uh, companies and government or are they in tax law? Mm -hmm. So they're in a, a number of different legal instruments yeah. in the sector, which makes it especially complicated. So, it, you know, you might see that there is a specific mining fiscal regime in the country's tax code. And so there might be incentives um, in there. Then you may also have a, a separate mining law, mm. which has fiscal terms in there. Again, it could include incentives. And then, of course, in the contracts as well. Um, so there's a, there's a number of opportunities where, you know, incentives may crop up. And so that can make it especially challenging for governments to then administer 
the fiscal regime mm -hmm. because it could be very different from project to project. So you know you, you find them in in lots of different sources of law, um, and I think the contracts is the area where we're most interested because a lot of the analysis that has been done in the sector has tend to focus on on the fiscal regime in the mining law mm. rather than getting into the details of the contracts. And we know that that's where there's a lot of scope for deviation. And we're we're really glad now that with you know, the emphasis on transparency and contract disclosure. Actually, we have a wealth of contracts that are publicly available that gives us, you know, the information to be able to do the kind of analysis that we're doing, looking at, you know, what's the prevalence of incentives actually in the contracts. We advise governments, and so our job is to make sure that governments are making informed decisions and that they have everything that they need, um, be it financial models, to look at the, you know, whether certain incentives are worthwhile or not, whether they're necessary to attract investment, um, and that they understand what the risks are associated with particular incentives. So there are some incentives that are going to be, you know, especially damaging. So a tax holiday, for example, if you wipe out 10 years of corporate income tax, that's a huge hole in the government budget, mm. you know, whereas if you offer perhaps um, an incentive that allows you to carry forward losses or to accelerate the period in which you recoup your, the cost of your investment, mm. those are the types of incentives that perhaps make more sense given the sector um, and are, are less liable to be manipulated or abused by investors. So our, our concern in particular is making sure governments have this information at the outset so that they don't run the risk of giving incentives that ultimately turn out to be more generous than mm. they anticipated and have big implications for, for revenue collection. Thank you very much for joining Rothworks. My pleasure.